2016. Amen. You should come in every new year with great expectation and hope. You should set goals that will propel you beyond where you was. Come on, talk to me. Don't let nobody talk down your goals, aspirations, and dreams. Because it's, it's according to the scriptures, the, the Bible say, if you can believe it, it's possible. When you aim for nothing, you usually will hit it. I'll say that again to you who, that was a curveball. When you aim for nothing, you usually will hit it. So if the year, this year, going to kiss you with better, it's because you set your goal to obtain better. And the believer shall say, amen. amen. All right. Now, I want to talk to you out of uh, uh, St. John 10 and 10, continuing some, some uh, uh, message that I must finish, even though I, today I, I'm turning to talk to you about thinking global. Because the Bible said in Proverbs 23 and 7, as he think in his heart, so is he. Amen. You are not going any further than your thought life. That's why you can't despise anything that challenges you to think further, think bigger, and to think on a, on a, a greater scale. Because as you think, that's a, that's a law. That's a law that govern man. He can't go beyond his thought process. Amen. Huh? See, your, our major problems and challenges in life, really, we, now you can hear that and believe it, but it has nothing to do with your skin pigmentation. The troublemaker is right between your two ears. And if you don't do nothing with that, I don't care what color you are. You're just a little failure and defeat and misery all your days here on planet Earth. Amen. So the word of God is the foundation for good thoughts, wholesome thoughts, fresh thoughts, ideals, and insight and inspiration comes out of the word of God. The Word of God ain't just a book of knowledge and information. It's a book of wisdom, the ability to use knowledge correctly. It's one thing to know something. It's another thing to be able to do what you know. And so that's a whole nother uh, course, a uh, lesson of study for sure. But I just want to say that to you because on this new year, you got to begin setting your heart and mind. You know, Ephesians 3 and 20, why is that in the Bible? Because God wants you to know something about him. He said, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Above all you can ask, above all you can think. Your best friends in life are the ones who challenge you to think more. Hmm? They're sure to make you uncomfortable because stretching does make you uncomfortable. Uh, it pulls on areas that you ain't accustomed to being pulling on, having to pull on. God wants you to think bigger and better. Uh, I started talking to you uh, about a faith that work, and I got to finish this lesson because this lesson is one that is certainly so relevant to the faith life. When you read the scriptures, you have to conclude that God is truly a God of faith and not a respecter of persons. It can appear to be that way because what sets the tone or the difference is you think somebody is more spiritual than you or they're more, uh, they have a corner on God that you don't have when in fact all it will be that distinguish men and women in the kingdom of God is some of us are willing to work our faith and others are just used to this having it and doing nothing with it. You got it? You can have the answers to life and don't utilize it. You know, 1 John 5 and 4 says, Whatso, Whosoever is born of God, whosoever, born of God, scriptures say whatsoever, but a what can't be born of God, but a who can. <laughs> so whosoever, is born of God, overcometh the world. This is the victory. 
Uh, you ain't got to worry where victory is at. This is the victory that overcome this world, even our faith. The only problem we don't overcome in life is that we don't use the faith of God to overcome. Ain't nothing you can face, you can't overcome it. Nothing this world can bring to you in any form that faith in God can't give you the victory over it. I remember something the Holy Spirit said to me and I said it to you, and I'll keep repeating it because you're going to see how powerful that principle is. There's no situation in life that the Word of God don't provide an answer for. It. However, you may not always like the answer he gives you. See, liking the answer is one thing, but it being the answer is another. You know, like some situations can't turn from you till you turn your heart. You think the, an the answer is, you think the problem is a person that you can't get along with or somebody that's giving you a hard time in life when in fact it could be all it is that you ain't forgave them. You, you have not you have not extended the olive leaf of forgiveness. And because of that, when you choose not to forgive, you get stuck in a rut. You get stuck there. Huh? Because God set those things, not based upon whether we like them or not. This is just the way the kingdom works. St. John 10. Verse 10 of that particular book. So uh, <laughs> we'll see next Sunday. But I know I got to conclude this one because most of us don't understand some of the most uh, powerful things relating to our faith. So we done heard the faith message, but we still don't know how to work it to get the results that faith can deliver. My, my, my. Glory to God. When you read this Bible and it says in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means whatever he did yesterday, he do today. And if he's still doing it today, he'll be doing it tomorrow. When blind people came to Jesus, he didn't have sympathy on their blindness. He told them, where is your faith? And when they, extended, when they exercised faith, their blind eyes popped open. Are you listening to me? Huh? He found people broken and downtrodden. It wasn't sympathy and sorrow that he, he released to them. He put a demand on them to make an exchange. Give me some trust. Give me some confidence, and I'll give you the need that you have in life. I'll supply it. And he'll say, glory to God. So if your year's going to be a better year, it's because you learn how to work your faith better. Huh? Hallelujah. In St. John 10 and 10, you know the scripture very well. Jesus said, the thief come not but for to kill, steal, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have that life what? More abundantly. And we got from that word abundantly or abundant life what? Overflow. Hallelujah. Overflow. And I said it is the will of God that we go from struggle, difficulty, hardship to we have more than enough to start overflowing. And when I speak of that, I don't mean limiting to any one factor or one dimension. I believe Christ came to bring total restoration to mankind. Everything that was lost in that garden from sin and disobedience, Jesus Christ came to restore it back to us. What the first Adam messed up, the second Adam fixed it up. And the Bible said Jesus is the last Adam. Meaning just like Adam represented the human race, Jesus said I'm representing the human race. So you get to get something because Jesus gave substitutional uh, work for you. In other words, all you got to do is exercise faith in it. I ain't never been to heaven, but I believe there is a heaven. I ain't seen the Lamb Book of Life, but I believe my name is in it. Give me some help here. Huh? 
So how I'm a believer in a heaven I ain't never been to and believe my name is a book I ain't never seen with my physical eyes. I got to exercise faith for that. I believe that if my breath leave out of me, my last breath, I'll step right in the presence of Jesus. Whenever. So I'm not afraid of death. Because all it is is transition. I go from one place to another one. That's the only root. See, the root of the root problem of people working faith is in fear. And Hebrew writers say in all men's life, they were in bondage to that fear power. And Jesus liberated us from the fear of death. Huh? Liberated you. See, so you go all the way to the end. The worst he can do, <laughs> then you come back and say, now let me trust you, God. Because I done faced the worst the devil can do is make me stand in your presence. I ain't got nothing to be afraid of no more then. Of the dead, the living, or whatever. The seen or the unseen. Fear leaves your life. And faith fills your heart. Hallelujah. I ain't afraid of what nobody think or what nobody say. It don't matter. I like for you to say nice things, but you don't. It don't bother the kid at all. Hallelujah. You don't have a heaven to put me in. You don't have a hell to put me in. You can't save me or deliver me. Come on, talk to me in here. You're not my source, no matter how much you like me. I learned to want to go on over your head to higher, higher power, higher blessings, higher source. So my trust is in God today. So then my future is bright. Hallelujah. Now what I need to do is learn how to work with him. Let's talk about it a little bit. Say a faith that works. The Lord told me people are sitting around with this faith, but they ain't working it. But they are expecting the same thing that people get who works it. We distinguish that you can be a hearer of the word and not a practicer of it, deceiving yourself that you're going to get the same thing that people who hear and practice. Talk to me in here now. Um, come on, I know this is the first Sunday of uh, 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 2016, but you in school today. We want spiritual education like we want natural education, don't we? Educate me to all the ignorance and the unbelief of religion and of what is socially acceptable is eradicated from my life because I want the fruit of the word. And Jesus says, so I'm going to get 30. Some going to get 60, and some going to walk in a hundredfold return. Where are the hundredfold return believers at in here? Come on, let's thank God right now for the hundredfold return. That, that is you claiming right now, this year, say it, this year, 2016, I will get the maximum harvest from practicing the word. Men, you are called to be light. I said to you, light will always be relevant. It will never be a season of society that the church is not a re relevant entity. Never. The church will always be relevant. No, nothing can stop the church of the living God. There's no power existing that can stop the church of Jesus Christ from moving forward. And the Bible tells us that we are the body of Christ, members in particular. It is our uniqueness that makes up Jesus' church. So every member has value. 
Every member has significance. You've got something right now God gave you that can impact people around you. Influence people that come across your path. You were put here to make a difference in this society. Hallelujah. You know, see, see that's what faith does. Faith calls your mentality to change. Uh, oh, poor me, I need prayer, I need help. You go from there. Who can I pray for? Who can I bless? Who can I lift out of the dungeon, out of the bondage of the devil? See, you don't find people like that needing a lot of prayer. Why? Because the kingdom is made of what I give out, I keep getting it back. He who water will be watered also himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for making me your water hose. Because as, as the water keeps squirting out on everybody else, the hose get wet all the time. It got to flow through me to get to somebody else. Think about it. Think about it. How many times I didn't ask you for prayer this last year? Now, it ain't that I'm beyond prayer. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm, trying, I'm talking about the mentality change and what you was needing all the time. You find you don't even need it too much no more. Why? Because the kingdom is made of what a man wants. He got to give it. You got to release what you want. And it'll come back in abundance. That's not for somebody to praise God right there because that's your word right there. That, that's your word right there coming in the gate. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, you're overflow. The harvest is always bigger than the seed brought. The harvest is always greater than the seed. Hmm? Whatever you release out, that's your seed, and God calls the harvest to come back on you. And he said good measure, too. It'll press down. It'll shake together. Somebody can preach it here now. I need to hear you. To start doing what? To start overflowing you. Because that's how he works. Abundant life. Because I got to shine. I got to have it. Overflow. I must have it. I'm called to be sold. I, had an, I have an assignment to stop the, the corrosion of my society. And if I do it one man at a time, I'm working the work of the kingdom. Glory to God. Sometimes God will send you a hole that nobody else will go in but you. You better go in there too, because he'll be with you. <laughs> huh? Yes, he will. All right, let's move on here because I got to get this lesson out now because I got to bring this to a close to move in to global thinking. Me and you going to be people who have a mindset that we think global. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's expansion, ain't it? Yes. Glory to God. And I told you, this year, summer, you're going to take your first overseas trip. And when you come back, you will never be the same. You know, we say some things that are just um, became colloquial expressions. But I'm telling you, there are seasons and intercession with God when you just follow the simple thing he tells you to do. He changes you permanent. He enlarges you. He expands you. And your life is never the same. And some of you ought to praise God for that because you've been trying to leave some places you've been. Come on here. You'll never be the same. Why? Because ex the, the experience of going beyond your borders. 
enlarges your mind. You start thinking on a different scale. And then it enlarges your heart because exposure does that to you. Some of you, that's all your problem. You ain't been exposed to nothing else but them four corners of that city that you live in. Or the four walls of the house you live in. Or the four blocks of the community you live in. And you ain't willing to go out of them four blocks. So the world is out here and you can't see nothing but Rock Hill. No, I'm serious. I ain't got nothing against Rock Hill now. You know that. But I've just been working Rock Hill a little bit here. Huh? So God have to take you and expose you to something else. See, this ain't a prayer. It's exposure. I need you to see more so you can believe more. I need you to see more so you can expect more. Say overflow. Hundredfold return. Ooh, ooh, who in here can believe that God, hey, can make it multiply back to you that it is a hundredfold harvest? Amen. And all that is, you bigger, your greater blessing make you a bigger blesser. That's what happened. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Open heaven. Glory to God. We are under an open heaven. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this with me, Psalm 78 and 23 for a minute. Look at that with me. Hallelujah. I had this up here for four years and then took it down. God taught me a major lesson that through faith and patience, you obtain the promise. Man, that was a prophetic voice to the whole globe right there. Open heaven. And that's the season where we done come to now. Amen. And some struggles you had in 2015, you won't have them this year, 2016. Come on now. Come on. Now, now how God, go, that ain't your business. I'm getting ready to tell you. The season has changed. The shift has come where you are now standing under something that God has decided to make happen in your life. So some struggles and frustration you had, you won't have no more. Not in this year, 2016. And what was impossible, God will make possible. What was difficult, God is going to make it easy. And some things you've been trying to get happen. I'm in the loop too. Trying to get it to work. I'm in that loop too. God is saying, I'm just going to take over now. Because you're under open heaven. Where your steps will be ordered by the Lord. Right place at the right time. Meeting the right connection. Glory to God. Hey, I'm standing under an open heaven. God's power will be manifested in your life. God's promises will be manifested in your life. Somebody ought to praise him right now. Lift, come on, lift those hands and say, Lord, I thank you for greater power and greater promises coming on my life this year. Amen. Job said, when we decree a thing, it is established. That decree, that's the old King James word. When you open your mouth and speak what you believe, what you believe, God will establish it. Hallelujah. 
Somebody ought to decree over their body, I'm not sick, I'm well. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, the law of life is greater than sin and death. Hallelujah. And with long life, he will satisfy me. Glory to God, I will not break down, I'm breaking through. For the Lord is with me. Wherever I go, you need to speak that over yourself. Glory to God. Glory to God. God, I expect you to take over this thing. Because you said I'm under open heaven. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Open <laughs> and bless him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You, you <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Jesus. We're going to be dealing with, it's going to be as, as you know how, how your kid was trying to do something, and you just find and say, all right, son, get out the way here, and you come and just take over. That's how God going to do his children all year 2016. We're just going to take over things for you. Just take over things for you. You can receive that. See, I don't care how much you think you know about God. There's some dimensions of him you ain't seen yet. You got, you got Psalm 78. Yes, sir. And see, now I've both been teaching today. Look at you folks in abundant life. I just can't, I really, while walking in the teacher mode, I was cool in it. And y'all unsnatched me out of it. Literally. <laughs> Glory to God. If I had one of the mics they were singing with it here, y'all wouldn't get to sit down in this place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Now, see, see, the problem with some, that's right. See, the problem with some folks. They don't know how to praise God, so they're waiting on it to, when they see it. Okay, thank you, Jesus. But the people who understand God, they know to get their praise on before anything show up because he had given me a word, and that word is enough. I'm going to praise him now for what 2016 going to look like. I ain't going to wait over until the middle of the month to start thanking him at the beginning of the gate. Hey, Jesus, right now I'm blessing you that my bonds is filled with plenty. My vats will overflow with new wine. My flows will be filled with wheat. Right now. Hey, because he ain't the God of tomorrow. He's the God of right now. Hey, hey, Jesus, huh? Uh, information separates some and revelation separates the others. I ain't functioning out of information up here. I'm functioning out of revelation. I've seen something and I know what I see. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of you was in the dumps all 2015. Your days of being in the dumps been cut off. It's a new day. It's a new order. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. For your shame, he going to give some double portions. Hey! Hey! Double for shame. Too late now, the well been opened up. <laughs> I say the well have opened up. It's too late now. We in there now. Huh? Glory to God.
We in there. Y'all know something to this open heaven. I done tried to get to Psalm 78, 23, three times and couldn't do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the first fruit. This is the first fruit. And if the first is blessed, the lump got the blessing on it. Hmm? I want to start out praising them all day on Sunday. Because that means all year, all, all I'll be doing is just praising the Lord for he has done great things. <laughs> Verse 23, come on, read it there. He said, yet he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. What God opened? The doors of heaven. So see, we didn't see that heaven has some doors. Now turn over to Deuteronomy 28. Let's look at verse 1. We see what comes out of heaven when it's open. What happened when the heavens open? See, that's our job to live and walk in such a way that we keep them heavens open on us. So that, that, that definitely means there's some obedience on our part, ain't it? Come on now. I don't want you to get into a, a, a hypostereo that you don't understand. Your responsibility is to be obedient to whatever God tells you to do. Amen. Because when heavens open, he begins to instruct us. Telling us what to do. And then he'll tell you what not to do. Who believe in that? That God not only will tell you what to do, he'll tell you what not to do. Both have major significance. Don't it? Hallelujah. Look at verse 12 with me of Deuteronomy 28. Let's read it together. The Lord will open to you his good treasure. Who ready for the good treasure of God? Listen, man, come on. We got to believe that God has so much more in store than what we've seen. Come on here. The open, listen, that's what the, the heavens bring his good treasure to you. The good treasure of God. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing to spin out of the pocket of Jehovah. That's what Dr. Bakri taught me many, many, many years ago. He said, I partake of the grace of God for I spend from the pocket of Jehovah and that same grace is now yours. So an apostle of the living God gave me the same grace. What, what that mean? I always have. I'll never be without. As long as the sun shine and the earth remain, God will help me in life. Then that mean I spend from his pocket. But then I see he got something else besides the pocket. He called it the treasure box. That's what I say. Ooh. <laughs> Somebody help me in here today, please. God said, I'm going to open up my good treasure to you. Listen now. You got to believe the word first. Some of you ain't been taught how to get excited. What you get excited about is God's word, not manifestation. Manifestation is always the byproduct of the word. Where there's no word, there's no manifestation. Some of you, your, your feet shouldn't be still in here today. Oh, thank you, Lord. What you should be doing right now, God use them till he fall down up in here today. Why? Because as I prophesied, God must confirm what he decreed. Stir up something in here today. Somebody shout overflow three times. Overflow. 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 Overflow with peace. 
Overflow with joy. Overflow with health. Overflow with money. Overflow with good relationships. Overflow. Overflow of restoration. What's been stolen has been returned. Overflow. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. I want everything that the devil has stolen. I want it back. I want it back sevenfold. Now I can see how God said, you're just going to be doing some things, and then I'll just take over. We will walk in awestruck this year. I said we will walk in awestruck this year. We will be awestruck because of how God is manifesting in situations and circumstances pertaining to you. Awestruck. Ah, oh, that's how you be. You can't come up with words to express because God is moving so on your behalf. The condemner is being sentenced this year. Hallelujah. And the bishop and the love of your soul is standing up over you now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Open heavens. Come on, read it to a minute. Come on, read it to verse 12 and 13. Come on, ready, read. The Lord will open to you his good treasure in the heavens to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the works of your hands. Stop right there and praise God right now, right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You come on here, man. I need to sit down for a minute. And I'm sitting down not because I'm tired. I'm sitting down because people ain't getting this. You're not getting it. He's saying if your hands touch it, I will bless it. What you put your hands to, the blessing will beat it. I will bless the works of your hands. Now, the only person in here don't like that is somebody who don't want to work at a pie factory. Because other than that, you shouldn't even been in your chairs no more on that one. God said, would you put your hands on? Because the heavens is open. Because the heavens is open. I will bless the works of your hand. I will send rain now on your land because it's the season. That means what, you've been, what you ain't been able to see that you plant, God says, it's coming up this year. It, it's coming up this year. Your harvest is coming up this year. Oh, I need somebody to join me in faith. My, my seed is bringing my harvest this year. It's coming up this year. This year. <laughs> it's coming up. It's coming up. My, my, my. No wonder God said, I'll pour out a blessing. You won't have room to receive it. Because when the harvest starts coming up by God's open heaven, you can't contain all of it. To bless, how much of the works of your hand? 
How much he say go? How much? Blessing all the works of your hand. That means you ought to have more than one stream of income, do you? You, you ought to have two or three things. And, and this year, your, your income going to go from one stream to multiple. Somebody please take that. Somebody please take that. Please take that. Please take it. Multiple streams. Hey! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Listen, that came by unction. Multiple streams. Good God Almighty. Oh, Lord. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm going to go sit down again. I say, I'm going to go sit down again. <laughs> Joe, I'm going to sit down again, man. Because it looks like God talking to me when I'm over there. <laughs> now, see, some of y'all think we fanatics in here. You watch how this year kiss us. And it ain't, listen, I can say it so bold because it ain't nothing the devil can do that can, that can cut off this. He don't have a snowball chance. You put the rest of that there. He don't have a chance to stop nothing that's being decreed. He don't. He don't. Listen, we have total victory over any fear. Of seeing unseen man or beast. The only thing he can stop you with is fear. And we put it under our feet today. God have not given us a spirit of fear. But a power. Love. And a sound mind. You can't do nothing to a dead man. You can't. The root of his victory against the believer is, is in fear. When you can get beyond fear, he don't have no place to hold you anymore. And we uprooting him right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Huh? Glory to God. Yes. The Lord, the Lord, you, all year you need to be quoting this over your life. Just speaking this word every day here. Oh, yes. The Lord will open the, to you his good treasure, the heavens to give rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the works of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, So you should not turn aside from any of the words which I command you from this day to the right or to the left or to go after other gods to serve them. That's the blessing of the open windows of heaven, isn't it? Turn with me to the book of Joel chapter 2 here now. Joel. Joel chapter 2. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus loved me, this I know. <laughs> it's some believers in the house today. I say it's some believers in the house today. <laughs> it's 
There's some believers in the house today. The Bible says he sends his word, it heals us, and what else? Deliver us from destruction. Thank God for his delivering power that's rooted and rests in his holy word. Amen and amen. Thank you, dear Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, I think we should stand up for a moment and just bless the Lord real good because he done gave us some declarations here. And those declarations will rest on the life of men and women all over this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to speak life. You need to speak life. You need to receive the strength of his word. The strength of it. There's a hidden strength inside of the word. That's bigger than anything a man or woman will encounter. It's rooted in his word. Hallelujah. Prophetic means it is spoken in one season, it come to pass on another. Hallelujah. For four years we stood under this banner called open heaven. Now we're in the year the heavens have opened up. Hallelujah. Just cause, just cause it didn't come in the timing that we were looking for it, and anticipating it doesn't mean God lied. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he have to repent. Had he said it, will he not do it? Had he spoken it, shall he not make it good? Hallelujah. The shout of a king is among us. The Lord have blessed us and it cannot be reversed. Somebody ought to praise them right now. Right now. I don't care what circumstance show up in this door, out of this door. You can't reverse what's been decreed by the spirit of the living God. It cannot be reversed. All right, Joel 2, please, for a moment. Let's, let, let me say this to you here. Yes, that's right. That's right. This is where we at now. This is, this is the promise of the Lord here. Joel 2, and it speaks at verse 21. Listen to what it says. I'm reading from New King James. It says, fear not. Fear not, look how I start off. Fear not. Tell the person next to you what I just said. Come on, tell somebody else that. No matter what you have heard, what it looked like, fear not. Huh? Fear not. O land, be glad and rejoice. So you go from being not told not to be afraid to be glad and you're too late. That's the only one I heard. Somebody else dressed that you're late. You're late. Come on back to church. You were told to fear not. Next thing he say, when you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? Listen, think about, think about the conditions that you were facing or dealing with before you came through that door. And now what you're doing by faith is praising God right in front of it. Think about the bad report or the negative report you got in your ear and what you're going to do right now is praise God in the face of it. That's faith being demonstrated. You're working your faith. Do you know what, a, what another word for faith is that a lot of people don't believe? It's almost synonymous if you look it up in the scripture. When you hear faith and confidence, you're almost talking about the same thing. Confidence. Because you can't have confidence without expectation. 
And you can't have confidence unless you're persuaded. I'm expected. I'm persuaded. And I got confidence. It ain't the same as arrogance, is it? It ain't the same as pride, is it? It ain't the same as ego tripping, is it? Confidence is, in God is the byproduct of spiritual information. And to, the, uh, and, and to the religious person, because they don't have the same insight, when you, when you are a confident person, oh, he's arrogant. He, he, who he think he is? He ain't better than me. It ain't got nothing to do with none of that. I've been enlightened, and I'm walking in the light that I see. And when you start getting hooked up to heaven, it releases confidence out of you. You start trying, wait a minute here. God is watching over this stuff. He got this under. He's gone ahead of me. He knew about this before it showed up. Nothing take him by surprise. How I'm going to get out, you got in, so you know it's an interest. And if nothing else, you go back through the same way you got in it. Hallelujah. He made a way to escape it. Glory to God. So you say, fear not. Don't let what you have heard put fear in you. Don't let what you see put fear in you. Don't let the negative opinion of somebody else impose over your confidence in God. Fear not. Then switch it. Rejoice then. Be glad. Be glad in the midst of contradictive evidence. See, you got to have some faith to do that. Uh, God ain't going to feel sorry for you because you don't need sorrow. That's what killed you. Sorrow plus sorrow multiplied by sorrow equals sorrow. All that come out of that is death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who done heard their word already for the day? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm like Joseph over there. This came off the, off the press here. <laughs> Hot off the press. Yes, indeed. He loved you that much, man. I say he loved you that much. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost say, just stand back in, son. Let me talk a little bit. Lay, lay them notes to the side. Here, I got something to say. <laughs> and I did it. And he's done it. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. For the Lord has done marvelous things. Somebody need to say that out their mouth. Say for me, the Lord has done marvelous things. For my household, the Lord has done marvelous things. Uh, you got children? Say for my children. The Lord has done marvelous things. See what you're doing right at the beginning of 2016, you declare the end for your children. For my children, the Lord has done marvelous things. I'm prophesying their year. It's a great year. Because the Lord has done marvelous things. Thank you, 
And I said, well, I wouldn't say that. You don't know how my children is. That's why you better say it. Because that's what's going to turn your children. For the Lord has done marvelous things. And I don't know about you. Some of you need to call their name out. Put that first name in the atmosphere. And connect it with the Lord doing marvelous things for them. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hmm? Don't, 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 don't think, think about how they were standing in your face two days ago. Prophesy over. Man, I feel the spirit of God there. I say, I feel the spirit of God there, man. See, the devil don't want us to believe in the simplicity of speaking the word and watching the word work. We've been taught how to worry, and some of us, if we ain't worried, we don't feel normal. Ooh, leave me alone, Pastor. I got to worry some more here. Come on here. You ain't going to get nowhere doing that. That don't change nothing. Worrying ain't changed nothing but you. But you get over here on this word of faith. Start calling their name out. Saying this here under that open heaven. Hallelujah. You'll get them out of the pit. It'll get you out the pit first. Or wanting to kill them. And then you'll get them out the pit. Come on, talk to me now. Come on. And you <laughs> and you'll start seeing the things change. <laughs> be not afraid. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field, for for your for the open pasture springs up and the trees bear its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, he's talking to us now, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain faithfully, or I think the King James said moderately, right? Now, why is he talking about the former rain? Because he's talking about when there's a work of the Holy Spirit bringing the rain of God's blessing, things that seem like wasn't working start working, things that seem like wasn't coming back up in a good harvest to you begin to come back to you. Why? Because it's the former rain and the latter rain coming together. Come on, talk to me. The former rain nurture the ground for the seed. The latter rain is what bring the harvest in. And I'm telling you, God said we are under open heaven where he pouring out the latter rain. The rain of the spirit that bring in the end time harvest. Then that say to me, we're going to see some kid folks get saved this year. They're going to come right in the kingdom of God out of all kind of twisted, messed up lifestyles. But they're coming in because the rain will begin to hit them right where they're living at. Right where they're walking at. You don't hear me. Right where they're playing at. The Holy Ghost ain't afraid of no atmosphere. He'll come in it and change things. I know what I'm talking about. It ain't no kind of house that got a door on it that he won't come up in it. Ah, see, we've been limited in our head. Thank God can't deliver them until they come to church. He'll set you free in the worst situation you can live in. He'll show up. And we're going to have some kin folks coming in. Coming off the alcohol. Coming off the dope. Coming out of twisted, perverted living. Coming out. Come on. God going to snatch him out of them situations. A visitation of the Holy Spirit will come up on them and open their eyes and open their mind. And 
the first thing you're going to do is kill the shame that have chained them. And set them free from the shackles of condemnation. And Holy Spirit will convince them by convicting them to turn. And they will turn. Lift your hand and praise them now because we are under open heaven. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God.